In this part of the tutorial, we will start preparing the game so that we can add towers by clicking on the different tiles. But before we do that, I would like to clean up in our hierarchy here, because when we play the game, you will see that all our tiles here are just spread in our hierarchy. And I would like to clean up here by creating a um, game object and adding all these um, all these tiles to a, as child objects to that game object. So you can click create and create empty and rename this one you just created to map. So we will have to add all our tiles when, when we start the game, when we add all the create all these tiles from our script, we will have to add these as a child object to map like so, so that we can just collapse this. So it makes it easier for us to figure out what's in our hier hierarchy and find the different things. So it isn't that messy. So create the map <clears throat> and make sure you have that. When you've created that, we can go to the tile script and inside the tile script, we have this setup function that is executed every time we create a new tile. And we'll have to add a new transform to this uh, as a parameter called parent. And this is the parent that this uh, tile will have. And we can just say um, tile, this dot, actually we should say transform, sorry, dot set parent, parent. So this will set the tiles parent as the parent we give here. But if you click build and rebuild now, you'll see in the error list should complain here somewhere because now we have a setup function that takes an extra parameter called parent. So we'll have to tell the tile or the setup function what parent actually is. To do so, we can go back to our level manager because inside our level manager, we are setting up all our tiles and in here we'll have to create a new field called map. So under camera movement, for example, we can do private um, transform uh, map and we can serialize this so we can see it from the inspector. Serialize field, not serializable. There we go. <laughs> yeah, good job. Serialize field, there we go. So now we have our map up here and it's serialized and we have to go down here to our um, set tile setup here, setup function. And after all these things, when we have set up our tile, we can make a comma and say uh, map. So now we are passing on the transform we just created to our tile script and we are setting that parent as the parent for the tile. So then we have to jump back into the editor and then click on our level manager here. And now you'll see that there's something called map here. If you don't see map, then remember to save the script in here if you haven't done it already. Then you can see map and we take map and drag it onto the spot here. So now the level manager has a reference to the transform of this uh, map. And because of that reference, we can add the tiles as um, child objects. So if we play the game now, all the tiles goes as a child object to our map now. So right now the blue and the red portal are still um, not under um, the tile, um, the map I mean, and I'm not sure if we want to put it under here. We can always do that later. Uh, but for now, I think we just keep the blue and the red portal outside the map here. Um, so it's easy for us to find those two. So we don't have to look through all the tiles here. Okay. So that was um, the setup or the cleanup of the hierarchy. So now that we have cleaned up the hierarchy, we can start creating our towers and we'll have to create all the animations for our towers. And when we've done that, then we will have to create prefabs from them so that we can spawn these towers on the different tiles in the game. So now it's going to get a little more interesting. Um, if we go to the sprites folder and find the towers, um, then I have two different uh, animations for towers. I have attack, um, attack animations and idle animations. And for now, we will not use the attack animations because we will only use them when we start attacking some monsters. So let's try to add some actual, um, what's it called, so, some um, idle animations. So I can open the fire idle, for example, and then I should take all the sprites in here. So I click on the top sprite and 
go all the way to the bottom holding shift down and then I have selected all the sprites and to create an animation from these I simply select all the idle sprites from the fire tower and drag it into the hierarchy and when I do so then a box will pop up here asking me to create the animation exactly the same thing as with the portal and I would like to add the animation under assets animations and let me just make a new folder here called towers and in towers I can make this one called fire idle so now I have that animation and now I need to do the same for ice idle select ice tower select all the sprites drag them into the scene and call this one ice idle or frost or whatever you want to call it and then I'm going to do poison idle and maybe you don't have as many towers as I do if you're not using these sprites that's totally fine maybe you only have one tower that's also totally cool and um, you can just create that amount of, of sprites you have this one was poison idle and what else then we have storm idle here so now we have all four and storm idle there we go so now we have four different animations here and you can actually go to the scene and move them a little around if you want to see all of the animations here on screen maybe I moved the fire tower a little too far out and if you play the game now you should be seeing some uh, um, what is it called some idle animations here on the towers but as you can see the towers are way way too large and the fire tower is reversed um, as I can see here the fire is going down into the fire tower uh, but let's fix the size first then we can just uh, fix the um, we can reverse this one after so now we have all the animations here but they're way too large so we need to select all the sprites let's uh, call if I write idle here we'll see we have a lot of different ones mm, let's actually just click on towers and just just take them one by one then fire idle to fix the size we select all the fire towers again we go to the pixel per unit and write 300 and apply there you go then the tower gets small as you can see um, give me one sec I'm just going to look into my notes here to see if it was 300 I used for all my tower towers and it was 300 yes and then we can take ice idle and select all of them hold shift down if I could only select the last one and when you've done that you click 300 and click apply and then ice gets slower, uh, slower uh, smaller and then we take poison do exactly the same thing and 300 apply and then we do the same thing with the storm idle <clears throat> there we go so now we have some towers with sizes that actually fit these uh, tiles I think if I take one tower and place it in the middle then you can see it, it fits the tile size better now so um, the next thing we'll have to do is to reverse the fire the fire tower over here um, because as you can see it is going backwards if you're not using my sprite then you don't need to do the next step so we can select the fire tower and then we can select the um, controller over here in the animator and if I open up the controller if I click on the controller and go to window and select uh, animator then we can see we have a fire idle um, animation out here if I select the fire idle and click here then I click on the fire idle and say the speed should be minus one and if the speed is minus one then it's reversed basically so now you can see the fire tower is actually idling the correct way so now the um, fire is actually going up from tower instead of is falling instead of falling down into it as you can see here so now we have our objects so now that we have created the objects we will have to make some prefabs out of these um, also right now we have some we have our animators and our animations mixed together usually I like to have my animators in one folder and my animations in an other folder 
So basically I would like to create a new folder in assets called um, animator. So right click create and write animators. And then I would like to take all the towers animators here. It's actually animating animation controller. Sorry, just move them here. I'm going to rename this one to animation controllers. Um, actually just controller. Sorry. Sorry, I'm changing my mind. So these are all the animation controls. I usually I put them in one folder just not to mix them up with um, my actual um, what's called my actual animations. And the same goes for my um, portals. As you can see, there's blue and red idle uh, controller. Just select those two controllers and move them into your controllers folder. If you want to have the same order as I do, maybe you don't. I'm also going to make a new folder called towers. I'm going to move all the towers into uh, all the to towers control sorry into the towers folder and i'm going to create a new folder called portals and move the portal controllers in there there we go now there's a little better order i think I can also create a new folder here called portals so i put all the portals animations into the portals there we go so now i've cleaned it up in animations we have an, two folders, one called portals with portal animations and one called towers with tower animations. And then we have a new folder called controllers where all the controllers for portals are in the portal folder and all the controllers for um, towers are in the tower folder. Okay, so now that we have created these, uh, the, this order, we can start creating our prefabs for the towers. So to create the prefabs, we can go to the prefabs folder and we can right click in here create a new folder called towers and create a new folder called tiles then we can take all the tiles and move into the tiles folder and let's just create a new folder here called portals as well so we're also cleaning up a little in this part of the tutorial okay so now we have our towers folder and to create the um, what's it called the prefabs just take these um, objects from your hierarchy one at a time and pull them into the prefab folder. And this will create a prefab for each and every one of these towers. When you've done that, we should rename them because these names are not very, very nice. Fire, idle, underscore, 00s zero, zero, and so on. So we can actually rename these by clicking on them, pressing F2 and call this fire tower. And this one ice tower. And a tower, a tower, and poison tower, and storm tower. There we go. So now we have prefabs for every single uh, tower in our game, and you can just go to the hierarchy and delete the towers you had up here, because now we have all the um, all the towers down here, so we can actually play the game, and then later we can click on the tile and move the tower into the correct position here by clicking on a tile, right? So now we have our prefabs. So I think I'm going to end this video here so it doesn't get too long. Um, I know we didn't do much in the video other than just cleaning some stuff up and creating some animations and some prefabs. But in the next video, we will start placing these prefabs um, on the level by clicking on the different tiles here. So thank you very much for watching. And remember that in Scope Studios is a community found page. So all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can get one of my projects as a standalone product, or you can support me on Patreon, where you'll be able to get every single project that I've created for every single uh, tutorial here on YouTube. Also, um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like my Facebook page, and follow me on Twitter if you haven't done already. So thank you very much for watching.